Welcome back to the Las Vegas Review-Journal Judicial Primary Election Conversation. Here is your host, Steve Sebelius. Tonight we are joined by Alexandra McLeod. She is an attorney uh, who uh, practices in uh, uh, insurance defense and insurance litigation. She's currently staff counsel for AIG and she is running for district court judge in department number 28. Uh, tell me, tell me this. Um, uh, I, I've asked a lot of the candidates uh, in these debates the same question, and I've been surprised at their answer. Do you think citizens currently have adequate access to the legal system? And if not, what could you as a judge do to remedy that? Unfortunately, I don't think all of our citizens have enough access to the judicial system and primarily the pro bono efforts that the bar is currently implementing is aimed at trying to remedy that problem. So certainly pro bono work that we are allowed to do as attorneys helps uh, to equalize that playing field. But particularly looking forward to a role in a judicial office, part of that job is educating the community both on how the court systems work, how they can help. Uh, they can help through donations to organizations that provide legal services and also letting the people who need those services know where to find them. It's one thing to have resources and perhaps those resources might be underutilized by target community that need them simply because they don't have the information. And so I would hope to continue being active with the community and communicating with uh, everybody in Clark County up how they can get the services that they need. Hmm. I know you have been involved with the uh, Clark County Court Annexed Arbitration Program. So this next question sort of pertains to that. Uh, do you think as a judge it is ever appropriate for reasons of judicial economy or any other reason uh, to impose restrictions on which cases can actually go to trial, restrictions such as mandatory arbitration or mediation? I definitely think that having alternate uh, programs to resolve disputes service everyone. It helps alleviate some of the burden on the court system. It also helps the litigants themselves get faster resolution. The wonderful thing about how our arbitration system is set up in Nevada is that it is mandatory that you go through it, but because you have constitutional rights to a jury trial, that does not have to be where your day in court stops. You can participate through the arbitration program and then go on to either a short trial or a full trial format depending on whether you are satisfied with how things went. I, both as a litigant, well, as an attorney for litigants and as an arbitrator participated in that program, I think it's very valuable. And I would actually encourage increasing the limit for the program. Currently, it's for cases valued at $50,000 and under. When I began practice, that limit was lower. That limit had been raised to incorporate more cases. And I would actually uh, think that it's time to reconsider that, go back to our legislature and perhaps consider increasing it to cases that are maybe $75,000 and below to further make those quick resolutions available to litigants. Interesting, interesting. All right. Um, you've been an attorney for almost 20 years, so uh, you've seen a, a thing or two during your, your career. Can you tell me uh, one case that you think may have been improperly decided and why that case was improperly decided? <clears throat> I actually took a case to trial many years ago with a judge who was later removed from office. Mm. And under those circumstances, there were some irregularities at trial, which uh, in consultation with my clients, we decided that we needed to file motions and uh, eventually file appeal because of some of the irregularities that happened in that particular case. That's actually the inception for me of when I started considering moving eventually in my career to the bench because I could see the difference that the judge made on the bench and whether the judge realized it or not, the great amount of influence that comes with wearing that robe. And so I really began to be very thoughtful about that. And as I got more experience so that I believe that I could be of service on the bench, uh, now I'm running for office. 
Sounds good. Thank you very much. We're going to take a short break, but we're going to be right back with our ju judicial primary conversation with Alexander McLeod for Department 28 District Court right after this. Welcome back to the Review Journal's Judicial Primary Conversation. We're speaking with Alexander McLeod. She is running for District Court Judge in Department 28 here in Clark County. Um, so, Ms. McLeod, uh, tell me this. If you were uh, on the bench and you observed a party in your courtroom who was being poorly represented by an attorney who was either unprepared uh, or, or ineffective, what would you as a judge do to handle that situation, if anything? Actually, that's one of the reasons that I'm running. I want to put people first. I understand that people are first parents. Uh, they are sons and daughters, brothers and sisters before they're litigants. And I've had the experience or I've had an emergency come up during open court and the judge paused to make sure that things could be handled properly. So if I found myself in that situation on the bench, I would first want to know what was going on. I'd want to have a conversation either at sidebar or in chambers and find out what the problem is. Is that attorney giving poor representation because they've lost a loved one because they got a bad diagnosis that day? Is there something in their human life that is causing them to be distracted from their job of representing someone in the courtroom? Can that be fixed with a continuance so that those problems can be handled and then we can come back with clearer heads and handle the legal issues? If there's something else going on, um, that that attorney maybe is uh, unprepared in an, a new area of law or something like that, I would do what I can to make sure that they have a mentor uh, who has experience in that area and again offer continuance, make sure that the litigant knows their options for changing representation, uh, but ultimately what you want to do at the end of the day is trust the attorney's uh, but treat them like people and make sure that the litigants are getting a fair day in court. Hmm. Uh, you know, most people who run for judge uh, say some in substance, something very similar, that they will treat all litigants with fairness and respect. Um, tell me how you deal with difficult people, whether it uh, be an opposing counsel, a client, a colleague, uh, 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 people like that. How, how do you deal with that? Well, we all have difficult people, both in our personal and our professional lives. Sometimes you put your game face on and you um, fall back on those manners that your mother taught you to get through the professional situation. And then you go in the privacy of your car or uh, your inner office and you think or say terrible things about that difficult person. But I think ultimately it's important not to let that person get under your skin to the point where you lower your standards of how you treat other people, both personally and professionally. We all have frustrations as humans. None of us are perfect, but I think it's important to believe that people are always trying their best. Their best on a particular day might not be great. And they might be a difficult person, but to give them the benefit of the doubt that you don't know what other people are struggling with. And so my goal is always to remain professional and not to sink to the level of a difficult person. I think one of my proudest accomplishments as an attorney and one of my best qualifications to serve Clark County on the bench is my ability to build relationships and earn the respect of my colleagues on both sides of the bar. And that's something that I would be able to capitalize on on the bench and make sure that I have that temperament so that the attorneys feel comfortable make uh, in my courtroom and making sure that their clients are heard. Uh, and, and with about a minute left in our in our conversation, uh, tell tell me what do you think is the greatest accomplishment 
if you can select one, that you've had so far in your legal career? As I just mentioned, overall, I think it's that ability to build rapport regardless of what side I'm on. That helps me bring resolutions to my clients. But I have had the privilege of arguing in front of the Nevada Court of Appeals, twice in front of the Supreme Court. And so I've been able to see all points of litigated files to know how best to serve our community on the bench. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Alexander McLeod, running in Department 28 of the District Court for joining us for this uh, judicial conversation. We really appreciate your time. And thank all of you for watching. You can keep up to date with all the political news on our website at reviewjournal.com and on our mobile app. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.